and welcome to Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her, oh my goodness, the light of my life, brother Ron. Hi, Ron. Hey, Laura. How's it going? Oh, you know, it goes and it goes, doesn't it? How are you and your cat? Uh, we're beefing at the moment. Ah, oh, Why? Because there is not one centimeter of my life that she does not want to invade with noise. No. And yeah. I never asked You're for her a cat. whole world. I spent so much fucking time with her, and I didn't Can't ask for Can't Judith her. like take her to work? Does Judith not work in like a cat possible office? No, Judith's work is not the most flexible place. Never do a job that has consequences. That'll teach her to be smart and driven. <laughs> yeah. Boo. Um, I bought some anti-wrinkle cream this week, Ron, and I've realised it's for people over 65. Scientifically, is there anything wrong with me putting that on my face 30 years too early? Um, I... It depends. I don't know. Maybe? Oh, crud. Well, oh well, it's a good investment. (laughs) I think that's just, is that not just grey washing so that people think, oh, that's designed for my skin? I don't know. Does my skin need different minerals when I'm 65? Possibly. I don't know. Me neither, Ron. Your skin will be fine. You've not lived a very cowabunga lifestyle. You'll you'll be Um, very youthful, I think. Mum's got good skin. Exactly. Mum's Dad not cowabunga. Looks like a sad wet walnut. <laughs> Dad's quite cowabunga. See, <laughs> it works out. Why are you so into the word cowabunga at the moment? <laughs> I find it really funny. I'm trying to bring it back. All right. Yeah, go, lab rats. Spread cowabunga into the world. It's just, uh, yeah, the, the week long, long conversation I had with friend of the podcast, Noah, about living a cowabunga lifestyle while also maintaining mm. your current lifestyle. Um, really hammered home how diffuse it is a concept, but also how pure. Well, we'll start a discussion thread. The cowabunga lifestyle. Are you in only on Lex Education? Um, I would say I'll stick it on the Facebook page. I've lost access to the Facebook page this week. <laughs> well, I'm falling apart. I didn't even... <laughs> oh, hi, Gnocchi. Gnocchi's back. I'm in the roof, so Mackie's downstairs. I'm the responsible one. Anyway, listen, hello and welcome to an episode. After last week's episode, you'll be pleased to hear some science actually happens in this one and it's a relatively chill episode for us, I think. Um, We didn't have many possible episode titles from last week. There were only two others that we liked. I loved Mystic and Mike's options. If you want to see what other people guessed, um, hop on the Twitter um, and have a look. Um, Our options, if you were playing along at home, were Cracker Dicken. We now have a an official discussion thread every week, so there's only one place you need to look for people. Jesus, Nyoki, please! <laughs> a moment alone! You're not even we now have, we <laughs> now have a, um, an official discussion thread, so you don't have to go searching for these things. They all Are you actually going to do that every week, though, Ron? Every week, I remember, and I've had a 100% success rate thus far. <laughs> Yes, the Twitter is the only part of this that I'm diligent with. Yeah, which is so weird because Twitter is falling apart and it's the one that we're really gunning for. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Crackadiku and What Keeps the Boat Afloat, you know, those were our possibilities, but do check out everyone else's. Um, thank you very much, everyone on social media who got stuck in on the World Cup. Obviously, we came last, but hey, listen, actually, I think given the competition we had, we did really, really well. So thank you. Um, it's a testament that, yeah, not many people... I did come last. Didn't we? No, we beat Dr. Buckles. Did we? He doesn't have Twitter, but nobody mentioned that, please. Um, we, but yeah, no, um, yeah, because we drew with him on Twitter, and I think someone said we won on Instagram. We did so. win on Instagram, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We, we, we did not um, come last. But yeah, I think you know we're a small podcast, but the people that listen really listen and get stuck in, and that kind of makes me very, very happy. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely. And um, we've got a new um, Patreon episode out this Friday. So if you're not a patron yet and you want to watch the Agathon and our other five um, 
Patreon episodes, then uh, Mexico 2 is out this Friday and we're rounding up our geography excursion. More tales of Ron's trips and some Mexican facts. So three quid a month and that gets you um, at least one extra, maybe a little bit more depending on if we've done anything else stupid. Once we hit 70 patrons, we're going to do Cook Along with Ron. Yep. So that's um, as badly thought through as the Egathon was. <laughs> Once we hit 80 patrons, we'll swap Laura out for another straight white man so that we can get into round two of the podcast competition next oh, year. Oh, Ron is so sad about that. He's so gutted about I've been telling him for years what being a woman holds you back and he didn't believe it until now. Here I am holding him back and he's like, yeah. what? I'd be flying if it wasn't for you. You would, Ron. This is the most successful thing I've ever done and it's because you're here and I'm livid. <laughs> If it, if it was me and Noah doing cowabunga education, oh. we'd be through to the final round. Let's do a Patreon episode with Noah. We talk about Noah all the time. I tried Noah to could get actually him on to teach talk... us some stuff, couldn't he? Well, yeah, he's an orangutan researcher. It'd be yeah. so interesting, but I asked him and he said no. Noah, how about, can Noah, you're a patron now, so you must be listening, surely. Can you just send me the research and I'll teach it to Ron from your research notes? How about that? Yeah? That would... That would be like watching Mackie try and explain <laughs> fucking the Iliad. <laughs> she could do it. She's a baby genius. Um, so there we go. Enjoy the episode, everyone. It's it's a. I think it's quite a nice chill one for us, except for the weird bit in the middle where we try and sing. <laughs> it's bad. But anyway, have a lovely time, and we love you. So it is. Biology. Yeah. How does How that do you make feel you about... feel? Um, I usually like biology. Look at it's us normally... sensitive, timid people <laughs> asking each other how we feel. <laughs> I usually like biology. It's the one that's just like logic and real stuff that matters. Yeah. Um, we, I think, so today um, should be pretty easy i think uh, we're still kind of in the um in the shadow of the april fools episode um but i think we will emerge into the the light of non trickos after this okay what are you doing here you on your phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're not really engaging or anything <laughs> no <laughs> Well, as I'd sort of forgotten that the Trico episode happened and now you've brought it up again and I think we might need to have some therapy together to deal with the aftermath of Trico. It's fine. It's just going to be a yearly event um, that messes with you. You can't do it next year. Why not? I won't fall for it. You'll forget. I won't forget. You will. I won't. April cool stay. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop talking so, about it now. <clears throat> Laura, biology. Last time, you remember what we were doing? Mm, no, but let me have a look. No. <sighs> You can just say no. If, if one of us is just going to read it, I may as well just read it. Well, it helps if I am familiarising myself. I don't know why you get so mad at me using my notebook. <laughs> this is a real trigger for you. It's not a trigger for me, but it's just I say, can you remember? And you go, yep, and then just read it out. It's like, just say, say no. Yes. I may as well. <laughs> I didn't say yes, did I? I said no, but let me have a look at my notebook. <laughs> you just want me to sit here, just... Fucking God, you make me angry. <laughs> I can't believe you're this angry after a nice chat about toasties. You just made me fucking talk about toasties for 20 minutes. I got stuff I to do, you Ron. I liked it. <laughs> this is your job. Yeah, and I don't need to be made to feel any less good about that. Okay? <laughs> We did all about diseases and STDs and um, and funguses and stuff. We did bacterial diseases. We did fungal diseases. We did protist diseases. Those are the diseases. Yeah, prokaryotes and co- co- coochies and those things. Coochies. 
I don't know how to pronounce what I've written down, but I would assume it's sweet cheese. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. C O C C I. Cocky? Cockeye. Cockeye. Oh, it's funny your way, yeah. I'll write down how to pronounce that. Cockeye. He's cockeye the sailor man. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's like a penis you feed spinach to. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So we covered all of these. Today we're moving on to the human defence systems. Now, what do you know about our immune systems and how we protect ourselves from diseases at the moment? Doesn't involve sticks. It does not involve um, molecular clubs for hitting bacteria. No. The skin is our first defence, and then second defence is our immune system, headed up by white blood cells. Absolutely. So the skin, um, basically um, anywhere that sort of comes into contact with <clears throat> bacteria has is, is the first line of defence. So obviously the skin is the one on the outside, but then also obviously you know in your nose and in your mouth where you're breathing stuff in swallowing stuff getting grit in your eye in all of these places we have first line defense as well oh saliva when you're a kid didn't it seem like you had stuff in your eyes all the time <laughs> i never get stuff in my eyes anymore <laughs> Yeah, stuff just to, like, I guess you moved a lot more. Like, stuff was always going wrong more. And also, your concept of time. Like, I would remember as a kid, like, you'd cut your skin or something, and then it just felt like, oh, fuck, that's a week of my life ruined now with a sore thumb. Whereas now, mm. I'm just so busy doing other stuff that if I cut my thumb, I just think, oh, well, I won't think about that again. Yeah, yeah, no, I am. Um, uh, when I was back in Taunton and um, me, Judith, mum, and dad all went for dinner, I just had a big cut on my arm. <laughs> mum was like, Where'd you get that from? I was like, I don't know, I'm my father's son. I'm good at maths and I bleed sometimes. <laughs> it's just, it's how we do. <laughs> yeah, dad always has like random injuries, but he's a builder, so that makes sense. Yeah. Look who's come I to s- see you. Oh, little Mackins. How's she doing? Well, she's got the runny tums again. Like Paul dog, uncle, like dog. Yeah. I don't even know what it is this time, but she's all right. She's pretending yeah. to be very sleepy today, so I don't walk her in the rain. Smart, smart. I miss our rain episodes. It hasn't happened in ages. No. Why don't you um, rain anymore, Belgium? We could just put some rain sounds in. If this, if this is one of your edits, you might be bothered. I probably will now, yeah. <laughs> Listen to it, listeners. Or don't, if Ron's <laughs> editing. <laughs> um, yes, so you smashed that, Laura. We have these things. They're the first line of defence. second line of defence is the immune system, headed up by, as you said, white blood cells. Yes. Now, there are lots of different types of white blood cells, but we don't need to go into that in GCSE. GCSE is for little babies. So, we just need to learn about the three just ways for the record that... there, I would like the jury to note that that was Ron having a little dig at me for no reason. I wasn't having a dig at you. You said what we're doing is for little babies. I said GCSEs are for little babies. What are we doing? Yeah, but we're doing this by choice, and also we're making a smash hit podcast. I don't see any little babies doing that. I think there are definitely podcasts for babies that get way more listens than this podcast. Are there podcasts for babies? Yeah. Let's have a look now. Where's my phone? Maggie is really intent on being between my mouth and the microphone. I'm going to have a look. Where's my podcast app? Big list of podcasts for little kids. What kind of a creep do you have to be to make podcasts? Relax music for babies. Small talk baby podcast. Montessori babies. Books for babies. White noise for babies. God's voice. Girl tales. Feminist fairy tales written and performed by playwrights and actors. 
Calm Kids podcast. Two sisters, Lucy and Charlotte, ages 11 and 8, share their original stories. I found one here that is children's bedtime story that will help your kid fall asleep. Relax to this Bible story meditation with background music. That sounds like cult indoctrination. Cowboy Sam, God's voice. Noodle Loaf, a collective interactive music <laughs> podcast that features echo songs, musical challenges, and a kid's choir that anyone can join. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> you give your kid, like, headphones and set them up, then they're just going to be singing in the corner with a choir? Hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know how to feel about that. Um... White blood cells have three different ways that they help us defend against pathogens, Laura. Can you think of any of them? What did you say? <laughs> White blood cells have three different ways that they help us defend against pathogens, Laura. Can you name any of them? No. Want to guess? No. All right, I'll just tell you. You me up with misinformation. <laughs> Two, your very favourite thing to say is, if you don't know, just say. Don't just say things. So, I won't. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> no, it's not bad. <laughs> the, if you, it's when I say, can you remember something, and then you reach for the book, it'd be quicker for me to just say. It's more of a Don't check if learning. you remembered it. Yeah, but I never say, Laura, have you got it written down? Well, you should, because that's more likely <laughs> to come out with a positive yeah. outcome. And then the don't just say things thing is not saying don't have a guess or have a fun time. It's about maybe a, a think about it before you say something. It's not yeah, don't Ross, say things. You see things. why it might be it's... triggering for me to be told, have a guess about what white blood cells are up to? <laughs> yeah. Why might that be triggering? Let's have a think about the last time we talked about what black blood cells get up to. Oh, because I mushed your head up, and that's fun. But the, <laughs> well, the point that I'm trying to make is that um, the the critical word in "don't just say things" is the "just," not the "don't." <laughs> it's "don't just say things." Think and say things. <laughs> well, I don't know about white blood cells. Phagocytosis. Oh, you wanted me to fucking guess that? What was the point in me thinking and saying anything? There was no amount of thinking I was going to do that was going to pull Fagin psychosis out of my head. <laughs> well, do you know what phagocytosis is? No. It's where the white blood cell eats the bacteria. Fuck you. It's true. What, a big mouth shape with an indent, is it? No, they hole. just kind of envelop it. Oh. But this is real. Phago from the Latin to eat, cytosis from the Latin for cell. So what, white blood cells are eating what? Can you shut your window? Pathogens. Open? Yeah. Pathogens. Right, and a pathogen is something that infects you. Yes, good job. Maybe if you saw a video of it, you won't think that I'm lying. I will. I just think you've spent a weird amount of time making a video. Mm -hmm. Let's watch this one. Okay, yeah, this seems fine. Um, how can I get this to you? I'm going to Facebook it to you, Laura. Why? What? Because the WhatsApp web isn't working for me at the moment. Oh. And your next choice Or if you get off your phone, please. No, because I'm waiting for your Facebook thing to come through. Oh, you're happy with Facebook, okay. <sighs> um, you're in a grump today. Yeah, because you were slagging off my potato salad, then you made me talk about toasties. <laughs> And now, I don't know why the potato salad thing got to you so much. Now you're mad at me because I don't guess about phagocytosis. Can't keep up. I'm not mad at you. Can't keep up. Oh, that's that's so funny with the potato salad thing. It was weeks ago now for the listener, but I'm still mad. <laughs> So, what am I looking at here? Lots of tiny, tiny little tic-tacs are all hanging about. 
and then this like amorphous blob of gel turns up and just globs them all in. I think that's the white blood cell. Oh, and in this computer animation, the white blood cells like rolling around and all the bad stuff sticking to them. Ew, white blood cells are disgusting. Yeah, but that's phagocytosis. As you can see, they're um, like glomping in the bacteria. Um, And as you can also see in that, you can see how much smaller the bacteria are than (laughs) Mackey. What are you mad about? Why are you being cross? You're very close to the microphone to be this angry. What's she, what's she grumping about? I don't know. Sometimes I think when she's asleep, she dreams something that then startles her and then she wakes up and is still cross. She's probably anxious. If you're going to make this noise, you need to go on the floor. Oh, oh. It's gone. Oh, no, there's someone at the door. Bear with me. Now, in fairness to her, there was someone at the door there. I don't know how she knew so early. Yeah. The animals can be quite impressive like that. Like, um, Gnocchi um, will know the sound of Judith walking up the stairs from, like, two or three floors down, judging by how long it takes her, um, and will run to the door. And obviously, you know, there's, there's four flats in, in this building. Like, people come and go a decent amount. She'll only do huh. it when it's Judith. Yeah, that is interesting. Have you tried ever doing it in Judith's shoes to see what happens? Like that um, bit in Aristocats? Yes, but unfortunately I, I wasn't in the oh. flat, so I didn't know. You all right? Yeah. Vago tysosis. You want to put your phone down now? Nope. <laughs> Watching videos for you. Please stop. We need to engage. <laughs> We've had a couple of duff episodes. <laughs> We're going to start losing people. That is not my fault. I've been here. Yes, you you were present. Um, So phagocytosis, they eat, they glomp up lots of them, break them down with... ATP? What's ATP? The powerhouse of the cell. No, that's mitochondria. ATP is the energy currency of the cell. So, would you just use energy to break something down? Yes, a laser. Now, I do remember the lesson we did on internal cell lasers, but (laughs) that was in a very different context. Um, What else have you got in the cell that could do that? Lysosomes? Shreds. Lysosomes, yeah. Back on her phone. I'm fucking writing! Oh my god! You need to say. You need to trust, actually. Look, here you go. I'll set my phone up within the vision of the camera so that you can stop shouting at me every 20 seconds. (laughs) That actually does make things a lot better. (laughs) What do they do? They... Destroy the pathogens in the lysosomes. The lysosomes contain digestive enzymes that will then break the pathogens down. Okay. Like a little tiny stomach. Yep. Um, But they can't get appendicitis. Fuck you, Ron. The next one is antibody production, okay? Yes. Do you know what antibodies are? Um, they are like things that can fight. Oh. Um, no, not really. Hmm. Um, so antibodies are effectively <laughs> very strong, and they can carry up to ten times their body weight. They're usually <laughs> split into two different parts, three different parts. Leaf cutters and <laughs> fire. Um. No, so do you remember that on the surface of cells they have these little markers 
Um, and it's how, like, it's how you know your own cells from other cells. No. Cells have markers on them, do they? Yeah, do you not remember the camouflage stuff that we went through in I the... I can't remember what was real and what wasn't real anymore, Ron. <laughs> cells have markers on them, like shirts and skins on your cells. More like... It's actually a bit more like the Teletubbies. Like, you can kind of tell which one's which by the, 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 uh -oh. the dinky on their head. What were they? There was a a triangle, a little wiggle. A circle. A circle. A zigzag and a straight line. A zigzag. Can't remember. Oh, I'm not allowed to one use One of them was bone. always wearing that fabulous hat. I was into Teletubbies at the time. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's Teletubby babies Lala's now. Lala's got two. I thought Lala had the little, like, wiggle in that... it. No, Lala's got two. Oh, no, wait, hang on. It Lala, yeah, Lala's got, like, a pigtail. Yeah, it's just at some angles it looks like two coming out of her head. Tinky Winky's got the triangle. Yeah. Upside down triangle, which is um, yeah. interesting. Um, Dipsy, just a stick, Poe, a hole. <laughs> God, poor old Dipsy. Just a stick is mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Dipsy also has no charisma. No, that's true. What was your favourite one? Mine was Lala. I think Tinky Winky. I think you had a Tinky Winky toy. Yeah, um, I've never, really, I haven't really looked at the Teletubbies in a long time. They're quite horrific. Yeah. If you the Teletubby babies are the worst. I've not seen. Those. Oh, it's like computer generated Teletubbies content, but it's their babies all living like a ninky. Oh! Room together. <laughs> there it is. Oh God! <laughs> Horrifying, right? There's so many of them. Umby Pumby, Ping, <laughs> Da Da, Mimi, Roo Roo, Ba, Nin, and Duggle D. <laughs> is Duggle D Will? <laughs> <laughs> Duggle D is licking the face of one of the other ones, so maybe. Oh. Um, oh, God, they are really horrific. Um, right, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Some markers on Anti cells. Everything's got antibodies. Imagine you were colourblind and watching the Teletubby. <laughs> How would you tell them apart? It would be by the markers on their head. And, How um, many body parts does uh, an ant you're... have? Is it three? Have they got, like... I think it's... Yeah, it's, it's three. It's three, yeah. When I was a kid, I made an ant on Bamzuki and called it Clive, and it won a lot of competitions. What the hell is Bamzuki? Oh my god, I've just remembered like you and Jakey loved playing something about penguins. You were in a penguin club. Club penguin, yeah. <laughs> club penguin, yeah. but yeah. Jakey's parents were rich and they used to pay for the, the premium subscription so Jake and I could really play together because he had much more features than me. Aww. You just had a normal penguin and he had an emperor penguin. Yeah, I only had one puffle, but he could get different ones. And they didn't have to be blue, like a <laughs> poor person's puffle. I'm sorry about your childhood trauma. That's all right. Club Penguin shut down. They flipped the iceberg, though. What does that mean? Just that. that um, there was an iceberg, and it used to, like, wobble. Um, and the more people you got on the end of it, um, the, the higher it would like go um and they there was like an urban myth that you could flip it and then they finally did wow yeah um anyway colorblind watching the teletubbies how do you know which one's which <laughs> because of the markers on their head yeah and cells are a lot like this actually because um so we have um what are called glycoproteins all over our cells. You don't need to write that down, that's just what they are. But essentially, they are kind of like um, little puzzle pieces on the outside of your cell. Your cells can go around and then, you know, remember enzymes, it's all like lock and key, they fit together. Mm-hmm. 
So your sales will go around and they'll they'll find one of your glycoproteins and be like, okay, yep, yeah, this is Laura, carry on. Okay, yep, yeah, this is Laura, carry on. They come across um, uh, what kind of disease would you get? Like a norovirus. What do you mean? What kind of disease find- would I get? <laughs> I don't know if I'm just paranoid today or you are being like really shady and then pretending and go like, oh, what do you mean? No, norovirus is Oh yeah, because of my potato salad, it's all full of bacteria and then I'm pooping everywhere. No, it's a virus, first off. And it's just because you usually have tum troubles. You're not much of a sniffler, so I thought you'd get a norovirus. Maybe I will. Well, I'm very upfront with my derogatory things I say about you. I said you were a potato salad kind of person. <laughs> yeah, well, potato salad's nice. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah, so then the norovirus is in there. It doesn't have these markers. It has other markers on it. Your cells come along. They go, ugh, this isn't Laura. Oh, I Phagocytosis. See. And that's my enzymes so that's are doing the... that. Antibodies. Antibodies. No, well, no, these are just glycoproteins. They're just markers on your cells. <sighs> but you said I don't need to write that down. All cells... You don't have to write down that they're glycoproteins. Just remember that cells have tags about who you are. It's like blood types. Blood types are these. So, um... A, a markers are a certain type of tag. B markers are a different type of tag. If you're AB, you've got both. If you're O, you've got none. Mm-hmm. I'm just writing down this puzzle bit. Okay. Basically, yeah, they're, they're just like markers. It's like Teletubby things. All of Tinky Winky's cells have little triangles on sticks outside of them, okay? Okay. And this goes for all cells. So when a bacteria is inside you it has its own shit on the outside of it these are called antigens when we um, make antibodies we make them to fit antigens oh so they lock onto each other yeah okay they they're like lock and key puzzle pieces for each other so we will make specific antibodies for specific antigens that are on bacteria or any kind of pathogen really okay yeah okay so there's when a couple of different ways that we them, use is that the body making them or scientists uh we make them uh, they're the 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 body okay. um white blood cells on that i think that's what lymph nodes are for yeah um, yeah, oh, so a... oh, we should do a science cover band called Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Limp Biscuit song? Um, keep rolling, 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 rolling out. Keep rolling, 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 rolling in. That one. Um, yeah, what, what could we do? Just that? one of those days, feeling like a freight train. That one, I think. Is that Limp Biscuit? One of those days feeling like a white blood cell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, so, so there's a couple of different ways that we can use antibodies to fight stuff. One of which is that um, once you've made an antibody once and you kind of got it, um, your white blood cells can then have that on their surface and it will mean that they identify that one pathogen so much better than they used to before because they don't oh. have to manufacture the antibody anymore. This is so where that's how so-called, yeah, so-called immunizations work. Yep. So white blood cells remember pathogens they fought before, oh. sort yep. of. Yeah, and, and they, uh, they I mean, keep like a template for it. So this is a bit above the level that you need to know for GCSE. Doesn't matter, it's going in. They keep a template on their surface and then they're more efficient second time. So this is how clever your um, uh, your immune system is, Laura. Not all white blood cells keep all of the stuff that you've run into before on their surface because obviously they're only so big. But in your lymph nodes, you have white blood cells that basically act as libraries that have all the different ones. And then when you detect... Um, the same thing again they'll send a signal to your lymph nodes and be like oh um can we get uh some uh, some anti chicken pox shit down here please um a hundred thousand orders of white blood cells for chicken pox please and then they'll produce those and um 
That's why your that's why like your lymph nodes will get swollen when you've got an infection because they're just producing white blood cells and sending them out onto the streets. Is that why they swell? Mm-hmm. Huh. Whenever so yeah, whenever you really get a swelling, it's usually white blood cells heading to an area. Like if you know if you get a cut and then it kind of swells up a little bit around the cut. Yeah. That is white blood cells flooding into the area to fight an infection. That's so interesting. That came up, that podcast that I was telling you about last week, about the um, AIDS crisis and the beginnings of it, that there was um, mm-hmm. a guy that had AIDS at the time, or was HIV positive at the time, and he was talking about how, like, people in the community, you'd compare glands with each other and be like, oh, yours are swollen, yeah, mine too. And it was, like, not uncommon to just all your friends sitting around to have these swollen glands together so that's your body fighting off all these infections that hiv had lowered your like killed off your immune system so you were just infected with all sorts of different things yeah yeah that sounds wow about right. okay yeah um so that's one way is for sort of memory the other way is that your body can just produce antibodies and send them out on their own um into your bloodstream antibodies are kind of y-shaped um and then on the two tips they will have um, the, the the mesh for um, uh, for the antigen, and what they can do is they can literally just bind onto the antigen of the the pathogen that they're trying to fight, and just kind of cover it, and then it won't be able to reproduce or enter your cells or do any of the nefarious things that it wants to do because it's just swamped with antibodies. Hmm. Um. Yep. And then the third way that white blood cells can help your body is antitoxin production mm, used a lot of different pens what should I use for this one a silver pen antitoxins okay yeah um, which I'm just double check um, I, th- um, I just want to double check um, my face looks droopy today my face Mine. Got a little anti dimple there. Other people have dimple. I have a little pouch. <laughs> Can I play with my phone? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, antitoxins. I believe just. Um, uh, will just do the same thing. They'll just bind to the toxin, stop it from toxifying you in the same way that an antibody can bind with a antigen. Make sense? Yeah, if I'm honest Ron, I didn't listen to the antibodies bit. Is that going to be important? But we talked about it. You said it was interesting. That No, that was the other bit. This is the why bit I didn't listen to. Um. Oh, just the last bit, the second one. The second way that it helps. Yes, yeah, I thought we were talking about white blood cells before. Yeah, the antibodies can be on the surface of white blood cells. Oh. That's kind of okay. where the memory um uh the the memory element comes from it. Okay. Okay. I wonder if we'll get flanked again um for this cuz we're going to do vaccination and celebration. I want the world to know that you're in love with me. Are you on your phone, Laura? Yeah, do you want to see something cool? Laura, how does a vaccination work? Put a tiny bit in your body and then... Uh, take the suitcase tr- out the van <laughs> Because if yeah, you want the best ones Then you don't ask questions uh, uh, And brother, uh, uh, mother, I'm your man I'm a man Cos he's the We're one who's good. driving so me There's a mystery It's like Why the changing of the tides Or the horses of the sea <laughs> One of the things driving me berserk Is water running fools and horses Work and na 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 Um, yeah, so you put a little bit of of a disease in you along with a little microchip and then wherever you go and whatever you think, the government can read it and sell that data and then you never have autonomous thought again. Um, it's that. 
Close, yeah. No, well, it is. They, you put a little bit in, and then your body can kind of just go grump, grump, grump. I deal with that, and then it means that when you put more in, your body knows how to fight it already. Yeah, can you put that, relate that back to anything that we just chatted about? Yeah, so you put a little bit in, and then the white blood cells put a bit of play doh onto the shape of that bug, and then take that back and use that as a mold for loads more. Put it in the lymph node library. Aces. Well done. Yes, that's absolutely right. So, um, vaccinations, and there are a couple and of other And celebrations. Ways. I want the uh, world to know that you're in love with me. There are a couple of different ways that they can work. Um, what you can, you can, sometimes you can just release antigens into it, um, and then they will pick those up. Um, and then produce the antibodies for the antigens. Sometimes you use what's called like an attenuated virus, which is basically mm-hmm. where they take the virus, but they like chop its knob off or something, and then it can't reproduce, but you still what's get What's that got to do with to... my knob? Lovely bit of string. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Just so weird. <laughs> it's all right for you. It's just a hobby. You've got a pension and stuff. It's just what I'm doing with my life. <clears throat> nice bit of blue glass. <laughs> <laughs> a filigree samovar owned by a saw. Um, Ron, just so that I've got it, because I don't feel like it's clear, what is an antigen? An antigen is uh, one of these tinky-winky triangles on a pathogen. So that's the shape on a pathogen. And then what's an an antibody is the shape on a white blood cell. The antibody is something that binds with an antigen in one of the two ways that we said. So either for the white blood cell to recognise it or to sort of swarm it with antibodies and shut it down that way. Binds with the antigen and that's swarm or recognition. Okay. Because it's all, then, just, it's all just like key in the Play-Doh, yeah? Like it's all just yeah. about shapes fitting together. And then an antitoxin is like an antibody for, for toxins, not pathogens. Yeah, so there'll be a toxin in there. The toxin will be a certain shape. The antitoxin will bind with that and stop it from doing its things. Okay. So okay. you can think of the toxins as being like tubby toast. And then (laughs) there would be an anti-tubby toast that is a face outwards that the tubby toast can fit into. Kind of the tubby toast maker, you know, like a waffle iron probably would be an anti-tubby toast. (laughs) Yeah, it's something, isn't it? (laughs) Lovely bit of string. (laughs) Here's a question, though, Laura. When did you hit the age of not believing? Oh, very late. I had one of those shameful memories the other day of mum... (laughs) Mum really trying to convince me that Father Christmas wasn't real before I went to secondary school so I wouldn't get bullied. Oh. (laughs) I was like, no, I think he is. And she was like, darling, he... He isn't. And I was like, no, I think he is. Uh, there was no point where I was like, I've got some suspicions. I was like, yep, seems legit. Okay, everyone. And then she was like, you should know this before you go to secondary school. You didn't think reindeer were real for a very long time. Why would I? <sighs> That's fair. Um... What's your favourite vaccine? Um, smallpox, because that looks truly horrific. Well, smallpox was an interesting one, because um, uh, you know the story with the milkmaid? Cows. 
Yeah, so yeah, it's because um, cause, uh, milkmaids would get cowpox mm. um, and their cows. Um, and uh, then um, uh, if you had cowpox, you couldn't get smallpox. Because, ah. the, because um, the, the antigens on each must be similar enough that after you've had cowpox, smallpox will trigger the immune response. Hmm. I didn't know that. Was it Louis Pasteur did smallpox? No. Louis Pasteur did pasteurisation. That Still makes sense. Still related. Yeah. It was Albert Vaccine that did vaccines, wasn't it? I can't remember if it's Lister or Fleming. I think it's one of them. Hang on. Oh, Lister rings a bell. Listerine, Isabel. No. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Edward Jenner. Jenner! Jenner! Yeah, I, I remember like him. you've done that whole bit on, like, um, on National Treasures. I think all of these things have happened. I think you asked if it was Louis Pasteur. I think Will told you that was pasteurisation. I think he then wasn't sure. I think then you Googled it and then you did a Jenna joke. Well, at least now you know that it's not just this podcast I don't learn anything on. Um, right, let's finish vaccines, eh? Yeah. Quote, vaccination involves introducing small quantities of dead or inactive, you can call that attenuated forms of a pathogen into the body to stimulate the white blood cells to produce antibodies. If the same pathogen re-enters the body, the white blood cells, the white blood cells, the white blood cells respond quickly to produce the anti, to produce the correct antibodies, preventing infection. Yep. Students do not need to know details of vaccination schedules and side effects associated with specific vaccines. Did they shady? Um, yeah, students I, um, can find all that on YouTube. Tell them to just Google <laughs> the problems with vaccines. And I think that's probably a good place to leave it for today. Yeah. All right. I like Next that. Up. I like knowing what a lymph yeah. node is. That makes well, sense now as to why when, like, I really remember, like, if cancer gets in your lymph nodes, that's when it's, like, super hard really to treat. Beans. And that makes sense now because the lymph nodes are your, like, ministry of defence. Yeah, yeah, the lymph nodes are super important. Yeah. There's loads of them as well. Riddled yeah. with lymphs. I hope so. Let's make more. More, more. More, more, more. My hair is tangled. My hair is tangled. Um, all right. Well, um, I'll see you for Toasty Chat. And then for that, I'll see you for the quiz. Yeah. All right. I'm not doing any more Toasty Chat. New segment. <laughs> It was a good episode, yeah. And I hope you've put some effort into the quiz. You won't notice the you won't notice the difference between me putting effort in and I will I notice when your question is what did I have for lunch last week? And when it's what's fibromitosis. Laura. Yeah. Students should be able to describe the non specific defence systems of the human body against pathogens. Can you name all four? Your skin. Ding. White blood cells. No. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely are. Acid in your mouth and stuff. Acid. No. Acid. No. Acid. <laughs> acid. <laughs> Stop just saying acid. <laughs> Although it does say stomach on the list, so I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah, thank you. Antibodies. Antigens. No, they're specific defence systems. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why did I write down so much stuff about white blood cells if they're not even... Because there will be more it? questions. Well, I don't know then, other than those four. You've only You've said two. You've just got two. skin. <laughs> I've said antibodies, antigens, white blood cells, stomach Yeah, but I'm acid. saying non-specific. What did you say? Non-specific defence systems. 
I don't know what that means. Well, an antigen, if you'd written it down, is specific to <laughs> a certain <laughs> to a certain pathogen. It's specific. So it's an antigen. Well, what am I supposed to say? Just immune system? Well, like your skin. I said skin! Yeah, I'm using that as an example because you said it. I'm not just going to give you another answer. Why not? Go on. <laughs> that's not how... See? You don't like it when I get hardball with the quizzes. But but what else is there then? Apart from Bones? your skin and your stomach. <laughs> loads. <laughs> yeah, immune system. No. <laughs> <laughs> your eyes? Your eyes are wet? Wet? It's not on the Saliva. list. Saliva. Saliva. Yeah, sure. The other two on the list are your nose. No, fuck <laughs> off. That wasn't one. And your trachea uh, no. and bronchi. No, this is just bullshit. Those aren't things that we talked about. Take so them away. Two out of four marks there, Laura. <clears throat> no, I don't. I don't. I'm going to put in an appeal. <laughs> That's not right. White blood cells can help to defend against pathogens by three available answers here. Uh. Phagocytosis. Which is? Eating up baddies. Yep. <laughs> um, antibody production. Which is? Getting the little Teletubby marker that's the same as the bacteria and cancelling it out. Close enough. Antitoxins. Yes, what are they? They would bind to a toxin to um, neutralise it. Good. Three out of three there, Laura. Yes, thank you, my beautiful book. I'm starting to feel about my book like Winnie in Hocus Pocus. Book! I, I haven't seen it. You've never seen Hocus Pocus? Uh, not since I was a kid, like, not in... Oh, it's great. Um, That's why you didn't join us for the watch party of the new one, then. Yeah, it would have been lost on me. It would have been a downer. Ah, oh, you are a downer. <laughs> um, <laughs> students should be able to explain the use of Don't antibiotics and other medicines in treating disease. I wasn't listening. What did you say? Students should be able to explain the use of antibiotics and other medicines in treating disease. Right. They're not just going to do it unprompted, though, are they? Because students are cool, so maybe ask a question. Can antibiotics kill bacterial pathogens? Yes. Viral? No. Two marks. Yes. Explain antibiotic resistance in broad terms. Antibiotic resistance would be like if you were taking antibiotics and you ha uh, to combat something, but basically like the antibiotics would be fighting the bacteria, but you wouldn't take enough of the antibiotics to wipe out that bacteria. So the bacteria would learn how to fight the antibiotics. And so would then next time they encountered those same antibiotics they wouldn't be defeated by them very true how do they learn by fighting them and evolving i guess evolving yeah well done laura i don't think we talked about that you just worked all of that out yeah i feel like that's come up a lot like in the whole <clears throat> therese coffee sort of having a bowl of antibiotics in a foyer that she lets people have when they pop round, you know? Yeah. And when people are like, you must finish a course of antibiotics, that sort of makes sense. If you don't quite tip it over the edge and wipe it out with those antibiotics, then they just work it out later. Yeah, well, it's not Because it's kind of the opposite but of immunisation, isn't it, in a little way? Mm, kind of, yeah. Because <clears throat> what you do is basically you you kill off... Most of them, and then you only leave the ones that are resistant to the antibiotic, and then they breed and replace all of the other ones because you've killed all of their mates. And then if you take a little bit more, then yeah, it's um, it's survival of the fittest. Mm. You remember when we were talking about the the little um, the little reindeer um, with selective pressures? 
Yeah, and the antibiotics isn't. just becomes like a rat carpet, basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's probably a good quiz, isn't it? That was nice. That was very good. Well done. Thanks for thanks for doing that, Ron. Yeah, ten marks for your antibiotic resistance question. Twenty marks. Oh, actually. I got a thousand percent on that quiz. Yeah. Well done. Winner. All right, Ron. Bye. So there you go. That was that was pretty chill, wasn't it, Ron? Yes. I liked that episode. I thought we weren't we weren't as mad at each other as usual. Um, I think uh, after down three, then yeah. you get back into biology. Um, you know, it's a bit calmer. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say the podcast that I mentioned, I've put a link in the show notes for this. It's called Fiasco by Leon Nafuck. And that is the podcast about the HIV crisis. And it was really worth listening to. Um, So, yeah, there's a link there in the notes for this. So do go and give that a listen. You're obviously a podcast listener. And there's actual real facts in that without people screaming at each other. (laughs) Um, The other thing I thought could be fun this week, we haven't introduced a new game in a while, but lovely Ali on Twitter, made us an advert which just made me so happy when I was watching it I was like oh they've just created this little advert better Um, than anything we've ever put out you shut your fucking mouth I spend (laughs) fucking hours making us little (laughs) clips every oh my god (laughs) Nucky climb on his balls again scrape down his nips like a like a cat um (laughs) anyway so i thought it could be a fun extracurricular activity why doesn't everybody have a go at making us an advert (laughs) then i can take a week off making adverts and um a fun game for you how would you advertise lex education let's see your best drawings your best pictures um you maybe you could compile a collection of your favorite clips what about this laura um we'll do a competition on them Winner gets to suggest the Patreon app. Yeah, I love it. Yes. And maybe feature on it. Why don't we do that? No. No, we're not actually going to record with them. Yuck, we don't meet new people. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> but they could send us a voice note if they wanted to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Ron, we're not letting anybody in our safe space. <laughs> we're too socially <laughs> awkward for that. <laughs> this doesn't work with other people around. That's why we had to make a podcast. Otherwise, we'd be successful outside. <laughs> We're both very nervous about having to try and do something with Dara O'Brien. What if he just walks out after like three minutes going, what the fuck was that? Oh, goodness. Don't. I'm so nervous. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. Have a go at making an advert. Right, Ron, the register. It's not in the notes, so you'll it's have to do it. It's in the fucking spreadsheet. Why don't you put it in the notes that we make for each oh, episode? Oh, because I do it last minute. <laughs> There you go, it's up at the top for some oh, reason. <laughs> I hate you. Do you want to go first or second? Uh, I will go first. Right, first up, hello patron Ellen Moss. Thanks for being a patron, Ellen. Ellen makes unpopular egg timers that boil eggs how Laura likes them by continually sucking sand from the bottom bit back up the tube via a... Back up to the top via a tube, ensuring your eggs are dusty and dry. Next up, I'd like to say thank you to Neil Mackey for being a patron. Uh, he is the presenter of the cult hit TV show Finding Raggedy, where they go off into the woods <laughs> to look for wild raggedies. They talk to locals about recent raggedy sightings, and they make raggedy calls to try and entice them. Oh, a big Patreon thank you. Hello, Fabrat Andrew. Andrew lives at number 10 Down Ing Street. They are not the Prime Minister of the UK. They're the Prime Minister of Shit Physics. And finally, thank you to Cat Slater, the benevolent, smiling baby son <laughs> overlord that laughs at our problems here in the colourblind Telby realm. <laughs> they know not of pain. They know not of the sweat on a person's brow after a hard day's labour. They know nothing of love or permanence or self. They are the sun, and they know us. Smiling, blazing, radiating the energy that the world needs to survive. And laughing. Always laughing. (laughs) Wow. I really really felt like I could feel your frustration with gnocchi in that, (laughs) Aaron. That was that was intense, wasn't it? Well, well 
listen, thank you to all the listeners. Whether you're a patron or not, obviously the money helps. But hey, any listener is a listener. We we love you for it. Um, thank you very much for coming. And we'll see you next week with another blazing episode. Unless you're a patron, and then you're getting another episode on Friday afternoon. Just what you need to, to brighten up your weekend. Okay, um, that's enough from us. Goodbye. Goodbye, I'm Ron. No. I didn't say hello, I'm Ron, so I thought I'd get that one in. Otherwise, um, class dismissed, everybody. <laughs> I love that you're just doing this to a constant stroking of Yoki to stop her jowbing into your head again. <laughs> oh, God. She just she perks up at the worst times. She I haven't seen her all day, and then the second I sit down to do the nice part of my day, there she is. Joining you for it. She wants to be part of it. <laughs> She's not part of it. Maybe you should put her in the register one week so that she feels involved. She's quite happy making herself feel involved. She's just pushed her head under my elbow in between my elbow and the chair. Nice. You're an idiot. You say class dismissed? <laughs>